Hey everyone, it's Tammy, and today we're going to do a one sheet wonder. And I'm using this paper stack called Santa Baby from Hobby Lobby. It is the paper studio, and it was $16.99 regular price, but I'm sure I did not pay regular price. And this is an interesting paper stack to me because it is totally outside of my comfort zone. This is not something at all of like the red and black and um, vanilla colors for Christmas. That's not something at all that I would normally choose. So that's part of why I chose it, just because I wanted to think outside of my comfort zone a little bit. And if I remember correctly, I got this after Christmas last year and got it for a steep discount. And some of the paper I love just for paper. I mean, this is really pretty. I would not use this for Christmas necessarily, but it is really pretty. Um, actually, most of these I would not use for Christmas. So I was trying to pick a design that I could use for my one sheet wonder. I actually like this first one with the poinsettias. I think that's gorgeous. And then I also like this holly berry one at the back, which I think is also pretty. And when I'm looking at designer series paper, I like to pick one that doesn't it, that is not directional so like I didn't really want to pick a Santa or something like that because to get all of the every to get the cards to work with using one sheet and we're going to be making a total of 12 cards with one sheet of design of pattern paper I wanted to make sure that I didn't pick something that had to go in one direction because there's no way I could do it with that. I really like this one too. I think this is pretty cool. So hopefully I can do something with that still this year um, or next, but I have a lot of paper in here. This is the first time I've really used it and let's go ahead and get started. The more I look at this poinsettia one, the more I really like it, but I'm already, I've already picked the holly one. So this is the one that we're going to use. And um, I got this template from, her name is World of Gin Craft on YouTube, and she also has a blog. And she seems like she is um, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm not positive. This is the first I've seen her. But um, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator as well. And the first time I've ever seen this was using Stampin' Up! designer series paper that is double-sided. And for that, that's kind of cool because you do kind of have two designs, well, you do have two designs. You kind of have two papers almost to look at, but this is only single-sided. So all of it is going to be this, which is fine. I like that. And this is the template that we're going to use. So you cut the paper first at five and a half, and then you cut those each into two inches. And then you cut it again at four and a quarter, and you cut those at three inches. And then finally you're left with a two and a quarter inch um, piece of paper, and you cut that twice at five and a half. And this is the only little piece right here that is left over and not used. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to take my designer series paper and or my pattern paper and I'm going to cut it at five and a half inches and then I know I'm going to also cut it at four and a quarter inches so I'm going to go ahead and do that too just because I'm just getting prepared and then I'm left with this two and a quarter inch piece. Let me just double check. One, two and a quarter, yes. And I'm going to cut this at five and a half inches twice. One, and hopefully you guys can see this, five and a half inches twice. And this is the little piece that we're left with that is just trash. But that's it, everything else you're using, so that's fun. And then this is the five and a half inch um, piece, and this is the four and a half inch piece. So let's use the four and a half inch piece first, or four and a quarter inch, I'm sorry. And we're gonna cut this at three inches. And we should get four pieces from this. One, two, three, four. And then with this one, we're going to cut it every two inches, and we're going to end up with six pieces that are five and a half by two. And 
And at the very end of this video, I'm going to try to remember to put a picture of the template so that if you guys want to scroll ahead to that or when you're finished watching, you can just pause it on that and you can see the dimensions so you can make one too. Okay, so that is enough for 12 cards. So I don't know if that I mentioned that. We're going to be making 12 cards and I used this Echo Park designer stamps that I think I believe, I think I believe, I think I got them from Peachy Cheap. I'm not positive. I think I got them last year from Peachy Cheap. And um, yeah, so we're going to use these. And I went ahead and did my stamping. I also did my prep work for my cards. So I have 12 card bases, black Christmas cards. This is so bizarre to me. And then I have 12 inserts. So these are just going to go on the inside because clearly you can't write on the black paper. And then I have 10 strips of red and these are cut at one half inch by five and a half inches. So one half inch by five and a half, you need 10 of those. And then I also have um, four of these and these are cut at four and a quarter by half inch. So you need a total of 14 different little, little pieces. And then I have my circles and my squares and my ovals all die cut and ready to go. Just so you guys know what I used. I used all of these from Stampin' Up. I used the stitch shapes in the squares, the circle, and the ovals for the vanilla portions. And then I used the scalloped portions of the layering squares, layering circles, and layering ovals for all of the background red pieces that are scalloped. So I'm done with those for now. So first thing, I thought we would just, I would just do this in like an assembly line. And I'm going to go ahead and put the card inserts inside the, the card so that I have those ready to go. Oh, and you're also going to maybe need some ribbon, and I got out some rhinestones just so I can embellish a little bit. I'm gonna take a little drink. All right, so I'm gonna fold these this way, and I need my inserts. I'm going to put these up here. Wait, those ended up being the same size. Oh, nope, they're just a little hair longer or wider. I'll just put all of them up there for a minute. Get them out of the way so that we can assembly line this. feels like I'm probably going to have to change my tape runner here in a minute, which figures just when you're trying to do something like this. So one, two, and if I used a lighter color, like if I could use a white card base or even just the vanilla card base, I wouldn't need to do this part obviously this is just extra since I am using a black card base I don't know that I've ever made a black card base card maybe I have there's a cat hair in this one I'm trying to pull it out oh well it won't come out That's what you get when you have long-haired kitty cats. <laughs> that means it's at the end of its rope. So we need to take this out, change this really quick. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves while I get this figured out. 
I need to grab another tape roll because I have been using it like crazy lately. This is my last one. But don't worry, I ordered more. I don't remember where I ordered it from. It was a new place. I was going to tell you, but I don't remember. But I always order it online because... It's a lot cheaper. And I love the Scotch brand, but I don't use that one very often because it is usually the most expensive one. So I just get whichever is cheapest. And acid free and you know, all of the good stuff. count of where we are. That's probably number four or five. It doesn't really matter. There's going to be 12. <laughs> Oops, I have a couple. Oh, I stuck that one on crooked. Good, I hadn't totally stuck it down yet. These are wild. We'll have to see what I think about them after they're done. I kind of wish I had like a foiling machine to do some red foiling on it. I think that would be really pretty, but I don't have a foiling machine. I don't even know if I want a foiling machine really, because it's just something else to have. Maybe I only made 10 card bases. Let's see. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Oops. I actually have another piece of black over here. I thought it was for something else. I didn't realize it was for this. So, let's go ahead and cut this one down. So four and a quarter. A score line. And then five and a half. This is the cut line. And, <laughs> starting off strong, aren't we? <laughs> Oh, leave it to me. Alrighty. So once we have those done, we can go ahead and like make it into a card by crisping the edge. I guess it's burnishing the edge. and 12. So 
I probably spent about, I don't know, um, 15 to 30 minutes, probably 20 to 30 minutes on prepping with all of my cuts and doing all of this, just so you guys know how long it takes. And then I'm going to put adhesive on the back of these and attach them to their corresponding shape. And then I'm going to put dimensionals on the um, the red part. Ooh, that one's the scallop part isn't showing through. That one's pretty tight. There we go. So there's four circles. And you guys could do whatever you wanted to do. You could do smaller circles or bigger circles, whatever works for your card. And then I did two squares. I didn't stamp that one well the first time, so I had to re-stamp it. Same with these. There were some of them that I stamped ornaments on and then I decided I didn't like the ornaments. So I redid them in snowmen. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I have six of these, so I'll just put them each on one. So I think this is cool because some of them are going to face the oval's going to be long ways, and other ones the oval's going to be short ways. I'm doing the same with the circle. <laughs> Just kidding. I thought I'd do the ornament, but I didn't like him after I did him. I mean, he's a cute ornament, but just not for this particular card. The snowman is better. All right, so once I have those, I guess I should put some dimensionals on the back. I'll do two on each one, unless you're the big oval, and then I'll do three. I know there's more I can use on that sheet, but I'll do that when I am not doing an assembly line project. Because that just slows you down. So that's all of them.
Okay, so then the first thing we're going to do, and each one of these cards is going to be made twice. So I'm going to start with this one, and I just take one of those, and then I take one of these. So I'm going to need two of those for these. And this is going to go here, and this is going to butt up against it. It's actually really cute now that I'm looking at it a little bit. So I'm just lining this up with the whoops with the bottom of my card base. And I really need a new prescription on my glasses. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape that and that. Then this just butts up right against it. And then it gets one of these. So see, that's really cute, right? I do like it. Huh. I'm already liking it better than I thought I might. So let's put this one here, this one here, and these one sh um, sheet wonders are really pretty cool. It can help you get a lot of cards done in a short amount of time, and usually they're pretty cute. And then, so um, that's the two of that one, and then I need to do two this way, and I'm going to do the two of these already and I'm going to need one of the long pieces for each of these and then these are going to get two of the ovals that are facing up oh, whoops I didn't put <laughs> I didn't tape that one very well, did I? That's all right. That's one thing I love about the ATG gun is that it, the tape is very forgiving. You can just kind of pull it off with your finger. So there's one. You know what I might do is I might just go ahead and assemble all of the stuff first and then I'll put the embellishments on. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do these two like this. I think that'll make it easier. And then we're going to do two like this. And it needs the long ones. I need two long ones. And two long ones. Trying to get it out of the way so you guys can see a little bit too. And I'm just going to do all my taping for these. One, two, This one has a hair caught in it now. Good grief. <sighs> I'm going to put this in the middle. And in the middle. And then I'm going to put these right up against it now I'm following her template for how she did her cards which is beautiful 
but if I need to switch something up, certainly you can. So like, let's say she only did two of them with the ovals facing this way and I did, you know, three. So I could, you know, I could switch it however I needed. That's not even the oval card, but I'm just saying, just saying. So then I need two more like this and it's going to go down here on the bottom and then it gets one of the long ones, long, long. So we'll do that and that. why he's squeaking right now usually he'll start squeaking if it's low on tape but I know it's not because I just refilled it you guys saw me I've got a page stuck to my hand don't I that's pretty <laughs> so I'm just putting this along the bottom and then I put the red stripe right on top And then next we're going to do two with these on top and I'm going to need the small ones and I need two of those, the final two. And we're going to have done 12 cards in no time. Even if you include the prepping that I did. And I only did that, um, I didn't do that on camera because well, frankly, sometimes that stuff takes a little while and you guys don't need to see me die cut, die cut, die cut. You know how to do that. I try to prep these just as though I would if I were doing a card class. I would prep them the same way, except for maybe not the stamping. I would leave the stamping for the class, but since I'm the one doing it, there's those two. And then finally we end up with two more. We need that and that, and that and that. going to go right on the fold line. And if you guys want to do the exact same pattern that I'm doing, um, which is this, that's what this whole one cart, one shot, one sheet wonder is about, then I'm going to, not only will I leave the pattern below of the template of how you cut the 12 by 12, or not below, I'll leave it at the end of this video. I will also leave a picture of all six of the different designs and you guys can pause and like look at them or whatever you need so okay those two are going to get ovals and I'd like for the ovals to be this way so those two are going to get ovals these two are going to get circles these two are gonna get ovals. These two are gonna get the squares. And these two have the circles. And these two are gonna get ovals. Perfect, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and Peel off my dimensional paper. So I'll leave these this way. So you can see all the different designs, hopefully.
and I think it's nice to do a stamp like that you don't have to color or you don't have to you can leave mostly just black and white or in this case red and white red and cream she did hers like this too she stamped it this way I wish I would have done that because mine's almost too square now I didn't even look at that when I was doing it so if I were to do it again I would put it so that it was like this but because I put the most wonderful time of the year like this I'm gonna have to just go with it This one I'm putting it's opposite that one for this card it's actually supposed to be this way but I again I did an extra long one instead of a horizontal one but they both turned out really cute so it doesn't really matter and then this one which way it opens. <laughs> One more. Okay, there we go. That is all of them. Isn't that crazy? Now, if we want to embellish and put some ribbon, we can, or you don't have to. I think I might use some and make a couple bows for a couple cards. So I'm just going to take my real, or my red, um, whatever it's called, gross grain, grow grain. I don't know how to say it. It looks like gross grain, but I've heard people say it's grow grain, but then I've heard other people say, no, 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 it's gross grain, so I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. I just like it because it makes nice bows. So I'm going to just go ahead and make bows first and then I'll put them on. It's part of the whole prep thing, I guess. One. I'm going to do at least six, but I might just do 12. It depends. I'll just do it until I run out of ribbon. So I might not even do six. I'll just go until I run out of ribbon. And I will try to be frugal with it.
see what I mean? Like you guys watching me do this is probably not that fun, just like watching me cut paper or whatever. I don't know why I didn't do this before. I actually thought about it and then I didn't do it. I don't know if I'll be able to pull two more out of here. We'll see. Oh boy. <laughs> Holy shimoli. Maybe I'll go this way. got to be one of the smallest bows ever and it's the tail is cut wrong but oh well but look I used all of the ribbon except for this little bit too so did good as far as I'm concerned now I'm gonna use glue dots where are my glue oh here they are and so only six of them are gonna get bows So I'll just do one of each, I'll just do the top. Each one of these will get a bow. Actually, I don't even know if all of them need a bow. Hmm. I like this one having a bow. So he's, both of those are gonna get a bow. And then this one can have a bow, I guess. I'll put it right here. I don't really think this one needs a bow, and I don't think this one needs a bow. I don't think this would help a bow. I guess I can put a bow here and here. We'll just do it because we have them. But I really don't think they need it. It looks pretty good. Sorry, my husband is watching a show and he's very loud. Hey, Dennis, can you turn that down? And then so I'm just putting the bows right on the glue dots. I guess I should close my craft room, huh? My door. And there we go. That is all 12 cards. Um, I have some 
rhinestones that I thought maybe I'd use, but I don't even know that I need those either. I mean, I think that it looks really good. I am satisfied, and I this, these are way cuter than I expected them to be. I might even have to do another one with the poinsettias. I don't know. Depends on how many more Christmas cards I need. But there we go. That is all of them in their glory. And so like the... Uh, the shapes and stuff, that's just for fun. I mean, you could do them all in the same shape. You could just make them all square if you wanted to. I just have the die cuts, and, you know, why not? I want to use them. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.